Are you a gamer looking for your clan? If you answered yes, there's a place absolutely perfect for you. It's called Clan Finder, online at clanfinder.gg. The website was founded by gamers who were committed to keeping the site updated with the latest titles, adding new features to further assist in advertising your community across the globe and bringing on gaming studios that want to give back to their players. Helping support charities from around the world, Clan Finder helps gaming communities promote their organization to fellow gamers who are looking for a place to call home. Long gone are the days when you had to scour forums, stem discussions, and sketchy websites to find a new gaming clan. Go to clanfinder.gg and search for your clan today. clanfinder.gg This is WWE superstar Drew McIntyre, and you're listening to the WWE Podcast. One that everybody wants me. This is my idol. You're gonna acknowledge me. Welcome to the current state of WWE, everyone, and in this abbreviated version, we're gonna be discussing the potential and the anticipated return of Bray Wyatt and Anthony, how you doing? This should be a fun one and a little different from what we normally talk about. Yeah, because the, we were talking about right before we hit the record button that, like, in terms of like the broader scope of WWE, which is what we typically cover on this show, not much has changed since the last time we spoke, and it feels like, in terms of like Roman Reigns, the overall direction of the product, and just like the overall, let's say, main event scene has kind of stayed stagnant the last seven days, and that's not a bad thing by any stretch. But like, it feels like all the the under card storylines have kind of moved along which are really good but in terms of like the big picture stuff not much has really moved no it hasn't and you know that's okay because like you said yeah. not everything needs to change every week there should be periods of several weeks even that you know generally things are not changing in a big way so we don't want to be repeating ourselves and this week that's why we, we're, we're talking about bray wyatt and the anticipated return of him and i mean i'm sure you're obviously aware it's the biggest story in pro wrestling without actually having anything happen yet yet and uh, having Bray Wyatt be teasing us now let's let's assume it's Bray Wyatt because imagine if it's like Alexa Bliss again or, or if it's just like Edge with another involvement of his character that would be god awful if it's not Bray Wyatt people are going to lose their minds this has to be Bray Wyatt so let's just start there do you think this is Bray Wyatt it has to be right I think at this point it has to be because like if it isn't like I saw like some reports that like oh it's going to be Alistair Black or Malachi Black, whatever he's going by now. And I'm just like, you know what? Like, I wouldn't hate that because I do think that not I. what I mean is like, I wouldn't hate an Alistair Black return because I think he is a guy that both WWE and AEW largely missed the boat on. And I think there's a lot there. But in terms of this specific thing, it would just completely bury a guy like Alistair Alistair Black. If it was Edge, which we now we know it isn't, it would completely bury Edge. If it is anything, anyone or anything other than a Bray Wyatt return, that person or persons and the creative team, Triple H, Shawn Michaels, Stephanie McMahon, will all be buried because there's a lot of goodwill right now with WWE because I think largely people have liked the direction the company has gone in since the change of power from Vince to Triple H on the creative front. But this storytelling of the white rabbit and the QR codes, and now you have um, morph. What, what's it called? Morphus code, Mortis code. Um, I, I, I forget what exactly it is. But if this isn't Bray Wyatt, especially with like you see now, like a pig that was <laughs> part of the uh, the QR code, which everyone already like linked to Huskus the pig. It's just going to be a massive flop for WWE because everyone has made its mind up now that it is Bray Wyatt. And I'm almost thinking, like, imagine if it wasn't Bray Wyatt initially. You would have to think Triple H is on the phone with him to try and pivot at this point. Uh, whenever, yeah, exactly. Maybe it is something else, and they're like, oh, crap, right? Like, the, like <laughs> if, if it's anything else now, people have already decided – Right now, the conclusion is Bray Wyatt and anything else, anything else is going to be rejected outright. So th this is a one track 
destination here. There, there are no other options for WWE. And like you said, yeah, if, if, if they were doing something else, they better switch very quickly and pay whatever is needed for Bray Wyatt to come back. And first and foremost, I, I hope that his mental health is stable enough yeah. for him to come back. I would imagine it is. That should be first and foremost. Uh, you know, that, that would have been the conversation if I was Triple H with him, making sure that he's good in, in, a, in a state not like he left the place that was I don't think we really understand how bad it was when he left. And we saw the the results of that on TV with one of the worst WrestleMania matches of all time. And it's insane for me to say that with, um, with, with Randy Orton and Bray Wyatt, at least in terms of the build and which I thought was very good with Bray Wyatt and Randy Orton that ended up being one of the most convoluted, bizarre, frustrating endings to a storyline that I've ever seen at WrestleMania. And I think now he has a chance to redeem himself. The fans are going to pop huge if they try to, debut him as a heel i would love to see that because it ain't gonna happen he never really got booed anyway outside of the infamous wrestle or the infamous hell in a cell match with seth and i'm looking at right now an article and because i just wanted to google if there's anything else that i missed while you were talking about the white rabbit and if there's any updates apparently the white rabbit merch is already a massive hit for wwe it's one of their highest selling uh, merchandise pieces that they have right now and it doesn't say anything about Bray Wyatt it just has like a, a picture of a white rabbit with red eyes and then there's another one of a hangman that says who killed the world so they, they've they're they already monetizing something that hasn't even happened yet which is amazing and it tells you the, the anticipation for Bray Wyatt's return it has to be Bray Wyatt and this is a guy that I would say like in 2015 2016 was the most underutilized character that they had. And I know that he had three world championship runs, one with the WWE title to the Universal, although his last Universal championship lasted just a week as Roman Reigns dethroned him. And isn't it crazy to think that the last Universal champion before Roman Reigns was Bray Wyatt? Like, that's how long ago we're talking. And I just remember always thinking that this was a guy that was a main eventer who the crowd inherently loved was always pushed as a heel but never really was a heel in a lot of ways just because everyone was obsessed with this guy in a good way with the lighters and the cell phones when his music would come out for the fireflies and like I remember when he had that segment with The Rock at WrestleMania 32, which was overly, overall it was a bad segment because John Cena and The Rock essentially just buried him and the Wyatt family. But I remember The Rock saying, like, you got it all, you got the charisma, you got this, and was complimenting him. And the crowd, which I believe there was like 100,000 people there in the, was it all state Dallas. arena? In da- yep. Yeah, it was Dallas. Mm-hmm. And they all were erupting when The Rock was complimenting him. And you know, right then and there, you would have thought that Vince would have pulled the trigger. And look, eventually he did win the the Elimination Chamber match uh, in 2017, won the WWE Championship, but only but lost it like a month later and won the most forgettable matches at WrestleMania 33 in Orlando, which I believe you were at in attendance. So, I mean, they've pulled the trigger kind of as a main eventer and a as a as a world champion obviously the fiend had a good run in in the middle of 2019 predominantly the summer but there is just so much more there and you could and it's so evident with the crowd like i don't remember anyone or any character any wrestler any performer be having this much support behind him when he's been gone for so long and has been booked so badly like people just know and can sense the creativity and talent off of Windham Rotunda. That's his real name, right? Yep. And it's crazy to me that like there's this much steam behind him when there's been no confirmation of his return. <laughs> it's that's all you need to know about what fans thought about when he was released. And, you know, while I know a lot of fans felt negatively towards Vince and management for releasing him, it may have been one of the best things to ever happen to him. He may have needed he probably did need it from a mental standpoint. He might have been in a really dangerous place in his life. And, you know, we, we can't always just assume it's Vince just being, the, you know, the devil himself or whatever people look at him as. It probably was 
a lot of a lot of things going on inside of his ma- mind that he just couldn't be doing this at this time, especially with the loss of uh, his one of his best friends, John Huber, Luke Harper. So there, you know, we can't always just think that. Oh my God, what what the hell is WWE thinking? You know, it's a, probably about the safety and mental health of Bray Wyatt and 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 or Wyndham. So I have no issue with them letting him go if that was the reason. But now he's coming back, and as you alluded to. The last time we saw another Universal Champion was in that match at SummerSlam 2020 with, uh, I believe it was Braun Strowman on the other end as well, but Roman Reigns injected himself, turned heel, and that's why I think, uh, going into the final part of this conversation here, I think they're going to debut him. At least the odds to me say, and there's multiple things you could do with him, probably facing against Roman Reigns uh, because there's a story there of, hey, wait, you you know, my downward spirals started when you came out of nowhere and, you know, you, uh, you I lost the, uh, the Universal Championship. Of course, he could put it in his own words, but that's the story you could tell is the last time I was champion was when Roman Reigns pin me in a triple threat match at SummerSlam and there's a story there and and why not because Bray Wyatt versus Roman Reigns you talk about a guy that is absolutely credible enough to beat Roman Reigns and end the streak Bray Wyatt I mean what do you think do you think they'll debut him or re-debut him against Roman Reigns or do you have other ideas here's the thing is that I would love that but if he's debuting against Roman Reigns he has to beat Roman Reigns because you can't have, you know, Bray Wyatt come back and then immediately just be like another notch in Roman Reigns' belt, another stepping stone along the way to a thousand days of this historic run. And I would be OK with it if he wins the championship. And to be honest, we've been kind of brainstorming for the last 18 months, like, OK, who's it going to be? Is it going to be John Cena? Is it going to be Brock? Is it going to be Drew McIntyre? Are they going to wait for a guy like Braun Breaker? Is Theory going to cash in like Kevin Owens, maybe? But I don't think that there's a better person to dethrone Roman Reigns than Bray Wyatt, which is crazy because he hasn't been seen in what? 18 months, 19 months on WWE programming in one of the more forgettable matches in WrestleMania history. And I honestly think that like this would be someone that I would be a perfect foil for Roman Reigns. And like we see how WWE has really moved in the direction of factions since the Triple H took over. Like who else just returned? Braun Strowman. Could they look to, you know, you know, pull on some of that past, uh, relationship between Bray and Braun Strowman could they bring back Eric Rowan like I would love to see this storyline and I'm not saying that Bray Wyatt has to come back and dethrone Roman Reigns right away at Survivor Series like they could have a series of matches Bloodline versus Wyatt family like there's so many avenues you could go down and so many things you could pull on there like I think it would be probably the best programming of like in quite some time including whatever the bloodline has done, which is saying something because them by and large have been excellent the last two years, but it would have to ultimately culminate with Bray Wyatt winning the championship. Yeah, that is true. I mean, Bray Wyatt would be a special return. It's not just another return. I I mean, you, I don't think it's indisputable that Bray Wyatt would, is a bigger star than Braun Strowman and Braun Strowman, even though he's bigger, stronger, Bray Wyatt is a bigger star and should be treated as such. And it's not just one of those guys that you go, eh, he'd be a nice fit for a little while, but ultimately he's not going to win. So sure. I mean, if he's going to debut and debut against Roman Reigns, but they're hell bent on getting to the thousand days, perhaps he doesn't debut against Roman Reigns, but we do get that match eventually. And and that's the story they tell about him losing to Roman in 2020. I would be all for that, but you're right. You know, my only thought is after he beats Logan Paul, which is going to happen, and we all God knows it's going to happen, is he's standing there doing his typical, you know, standing there, the fireworks are going off, both championships overhead, and we've seen this um, countless times, uh, although not every time, of somebody coming out after he's dominated whoever and that program's over. And then maybe the lights go out and the fiend comes face to face with Roman in Saudi Arabia. Now, I know people hate Saudi Arabia. I'm not a fan of a lot of things that have to do with that event and the place and all that. But that aside, uh, it, it is still a big event, uh, you know, and it, it, it is possible that the Saudi Arabian uh, prince has enough dollars or zeros to put on that check to make that happen. It's possible uh, because after he goes through Logan Paul, I mean, we don't know what's going to happen. It could be Braun Strowman. It could be Seth Rollins. You know, it, it, it could be a number of guys. 
But uh, The Fiend versus Roman, it, it has to happen. I would argue that if uh, The Rock and Roman don't go at it at WrestleMania, that it should be Bray Wyatt and Roman Reigns at WrestleMania, and Bray Wyatt maybe takes the belt off of Roman. Only problem is you don't get to your thousand days. And maybe I'm making more of a deal about the thousand than most people, or maybe WWE doesn't really care as much as I think they care about it, but we'll have to see. Um, but do, so what's your what's your guess as to maybe who he targets right away then? If you don't think he's going to go after Roman right away because they don't want to have just him be another notch, when does the Bray Wyatt Roman Reigns program happen for you? Well, it would have to happen somewhere in the next you know, six to eight months because you also want to capitalize off of the momentum of his return. So I think that maybe as early as I, I think the latest you could go would be next year's SummerSlam. And I think that next year's SummerSlam would probably be like a ballpark time for when Roman Reigns would maybe drop one of the championships or both of the championships. As for who the Fiend would or Bray Wyatt, I don't even know if they would bring back the Fiend. I'm not really sure. Like you saw that interview that uh, Seth Rollins did with Ariel Hawani about mm-hmm. how it was very difficult to work with The Fiend. And as much as I love The Fiend, it is kind of true. And thinking back to when they kind of debuted it, it was a character with a short shelf life. And I'm not going to lie, I kind of missed Bray Wyatt's promos from when he was kind of like the, the cult leader. Because, like, I liked him when he had the Firefly Funhouse, and obviously The Fiend was a very culminating, captivating character. But there was something about the way he would cut promos as the cult leader in the back room that was really, really, I don't know, like intriguing. And he had a way of speaking. And I think he could probably be more creative as opposed to with The Fiend that it was kind of like a one-trick pony in a lot of ways. So if you have him come back as the swamp leader or the swamp leader, the cult leader (laughs) from the swamp probably, I think you could go in many different directions. Like, Obviously, you have a lot of guys that you could pull on in the main event as like a Seth Rollins, maybe, maybe a returning Cody Rhodes. But it would also have to be like, is he coming back as a heel or a babyface? Because I would argue, I know he's always been a heel in WWE, but in a lot of ways, like, how could you bring this guy back as a heel? You can't. Good luck. I mean, I mean, <laughs> honestly, it's it's almost impossible. I mean, just because the build is too hot, and honestly, it's probably not even a smart idea to try. You would really be pouring cold water on, a, on an absolute cash cow. I mean, the, he's already selling merchandise, and he's not there. And people are already dissecting and trying to decode when he's coming back. It's the it, it's one of the most talked about stories, and no one's even done anything yet. Uh, you they would be foolish. It would almost be as bad as Seth Rollins turning heel at Extreme Rules back in what 2016 or whenever he returned against uh, Roman Reigns or screwed Roman Reigns out of the championship, and uh, yep. the, the people are going crazy and they turned him heel like idiots. Um, and I hope they, they just can't. They can't do that. I think Triple H is much smarter than to even try to attempt that. And like we said, during his entire run as the Fiend, it it never he never really got booed. And uh, you know, it just be it would be foolish. It'd be foolish, especially from a money perspective. They would lose out on I think on a lot of uh, revenue there. And Roman Reigns needs someone new to dance with. I mean, th- this is a perfect foil for him. And he may not come back as the Fiend, but that was such a unique character that was so uncaptivating and you just couldn't stop staring at it even though they there at times he was booked as a heel he was just too cool to be booed so i think that right now he's going to return as a baby face and there's just no two ways about it he may not atta- attack roman right away but if he doesn't there's braun Strowman hanging out there um he's i know he's a baby face but people don't love braun Strowman, so you know, there's options out there but to me roman reigns is target number one it just depends on whether or not they're going to actually go through with him beating Roman for the championship. He can't be another notch. Bray Wyatt is a different animal. He's somebody that hasn't been around. People want it, and it's believable. And uh, so, yeah. Uh, Anything else you want to mention about this before we wrap it up? You're listening to the WWE Podcast. We'll be right back after this short break. 
Are you a gamer looking for your clan? If you answered yes, there's a place absolutely perfect for you. It's called Clan Finder, online at clanfinder.gg. The website was founded by gamers who were committed to keeping the site updated with the latest titles, adding new features to further assist in advertising your community across the globe and bringing on gaming studios that want to give back to their players. Helping support charities from around the world, Clan Finder helps gaming communities promote their organization to fellow gamers who are looking for a place to call home. Long gone are the days when you had to scour forums, stem discussions, and sketchy websites to find a new gaming clan. Go to clanfinder.gg and search for your clan today. clanfinder.gg Welcome back to the WWE Podcast. Let's get back to more great wrestling audio. All I wanted to say, well, all I would ask for you is, or ask to you rather, is if it were up to you, you were booking, you were head of creative, would you book him right away to come back and face Roman and have him take the championship off of Roman before WrestleMania? It would depend on one thing, The Rock. Uh, if the rock, because at this point I would be, if I was triple H, I would, I would call Dwayne and I'd be like, Hey, like, is it, is this happening? Are you coming or not? Because we've got to start building towards <laughs> WrestleMania. I mean, really, because you could easily make a Bray Wyatt, Roman Reigns, WrestleMania match. But I know people have talked about Cody Rhodes. I want nothing to do with the baby face, Cody Rhodes facing Roman at all. You and I. Yeah. Um, but if, if rocks not there, then sure. Take the slow road, the slow build, have Bray with somebody else for a couple of months. December's a dead month worth wrestling anyway. There's not even a, a premium live event, I don't think. And then things really kick into first, you know, fifth gear in January with the Rumble. If it were me, The Rock is not there. I would go with uh, Bray and Roman at WrestleMania, have Bray Wyatt win, win there. If The Rock is going to be there... You and I both agree there should be no championship on the line, but that match has to happen. To me, that is a bigger match than Bray and Roman. So there's no belt. That means that Roman has to drop it before then. I would have Roman drop it at Survivor Series, call it a day. Bray Wyatt wins the championship. Now Roman is free to, to face the Rock. So to me, it's hinging on Dwayne Johnson. Like that That's the answer for me. Yeah, I think that's a perfectly fine answer. But like, if you have Bray Wyatt come back, and I think at this point it's a question of when, not if, you're going to have a guy who we've been talking about a lot about not having someone on par with Roman Reigns, but I don't think the fans will accept anything less than Bray Wyatt as on par with Roman Reigns. He is going to be that big of a success. Oh, it's going to be deafening wherever he debuts. And I, I really do believe it will probably be Saudi Arabia, but it's going to be absolutely deafening. And I, I really can't wait for it. It's going to be one of those goosebump moments. And I'm interested to see what new spin on the fiend or, you know it's not going to be a duplicate of what he left as, so I'm interested to see in that creative, warped, but just intriguing mind of Wyndham what he's come up with after all this time of how he's going to come back, because it's not going to be exact. There's going to be some new twists, maybe new music, maybe new mask, maybe no mask, but there's going to be some version of him that we recognize just evolved, and I, I really am excited to hear about it or see it. So, uh, before we go, though, of course, let everyone know that uh, you do do another podcast on here, and it drops every Friday called Rock Rivalries and let everyone know about that. No, no, no. It's retro oh, now, geez. Matt. <laughs> retro. I was looking at rivalries. Retro. I'm still stuck on rivalries, but retro. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> hey, rivalries was a good show, but we had to switch it up a bit. And it was a way of kind of blending rivalries with your old show, Nostalgia, right? Yes. So it kind of opened up a lot of avenues. And this week, I kind of probably talked about like an infamous topic of the authority that range from uh, mid-2013 all the way to, I would say, early 2016. And, you know, it kind of became monotonous. It kind of became redundant. It really became boring. But there were a, there was a lot of good to come out of the authority angle in the early years. No, it is. And I listened to that, and you make some good points about things that actually I didn't think about or didn't remember. Because I look back, and I think all of us look back at that the, the authority era and go, oh, my God, that lasted forever. That was awful. But there are some good things that came out of it, despite the fact it went way too long. And when John Cena, his team beat the authority, at, I think it was Survivor Series, the authority only yeah. went away for like a month, and then they came back. Yeah. I remember I was like, what the hell is this? You know, like, <laughs> um, But outside of that, yeah, there was some good, and I'd encourage everyone to go listen to to the retro show from last week with the authority and uh i know that uh, we both have to run here but we'll have to cover this more as bray wyatt gets closer and closer to debuting um uh, because 
it's gonna be it's gonna be a lot of fun. He'll be he'll be a massive shot of adrenaline in the arm of WWE. So, um, all right. Well, thanks so much for joining me, buddy, and we'll be talking next week. Yeah, man. Looking forward to it. Take care. Are you a gamer looking for your clan? If you answered yes, there's a place absolutely perfect for you. It's called Clan Finder, online at clanfinder.gg. The website was founded by gamers who were committed to keeping the site updated with the latest titles, adding new features to further assist in advertising your community across the globe and bringing on gaming studios that want to give back to their players. Helping support charities from around the world, Clan Finder helps gaming communities promote their organization to fellow gamers who are looking for a place to call home. Long gone are the days when you had to scour forums, stem discussions, and sketchy websites to find a new gaming clan. Go to clanfinder.gg and search for your clan today. clanfinder.gg Thanks for listening to the WWE Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe on your favorite podcast app so you don't miss a show or head to wwepodcast.com and for all of these shows ad free head over to patreon.com slash wwe podcast until then we'll see you next time